So here's a rundown of the Bluetooth low energy BLE app controlled RF glow sticks. I've got eight of them here. One of them is disassembled. I've got an app. The app lets you change the colors of all of them together through a RF transmitter. Easy enough. So how did I put this all together? So first we've got the actual glow stick itself. And the glow stick is microcontroller controlled. And this is an RFB from Seed Studio. And this is a PC board that I designed. It's got a regulator and it's got a PWM driver for the LED. So regulator, the microcontroller goes in here. And basically this will then control this unit here, which is a, uh, which is an RGB LED. The next thing, of course, having designed the board for it and all the electronics is I need a, needed a case for it. So the cases here you can see are 3D printed in a couple of different materials. This one was printed in 3D materials, 3DM ABS on a Kudo 3D Titan 1 SLA printer. This one was printed in fun to do resin on an SLA printer. This is PLA on the Lulzbot Taz 5. This was printed in uh, Esun's PETG also on the Lulz, on the Taz 5. And the case pretty much holds the motherboard like this, exposing the power switch here for use. And then there is a LED assembly inside of here, and that is screwed into a diffuser holder of my design. So there's a diffuser, of course, that's got to diffuse the light, and we need to position this in relative to the LED and the and the lens on it. A couple of different kinds of diffusers I'll talk about in a bit. Um, but you do need this coupler here so that the handle will be held onto the diffuser. Um, and so the diffuser, the LED has a connector and then there are these tabs and slots that it put, slides into. Nine volt battery controlled, nine volt battery here. Put that in here. And then the whole thing is kind of held together. There are pockets here. Uh, might be easier to show you on this version here that's white. Right, four squares here. These were designed to hold magnets so that the two halves could be held together with, uh, with magnets. Turns out, don't need them. There is tension on the diffuser coupler and there's tension on the battery itself. Um, there are these standoffs here that hold the battery in the center. And this actually holds the whole thing together quite securely. And then there's a diffuser that's got to go at the end of this. These are Kingblade X10 diffusers. That's the original size that I designed the couplers for. And then if you wanted to go all entirely DIY, there's a, I modeled it in 3D. This one I had printed at Sculpteo in SLA nylon. Oh, sorry, um, SLS nylon, laser sintered, which does go in like this. And then from that design, you can make your own. And so I made a mold. This is a little insert to go into it and molded them in and can mold them in polyurethane. Although in this case, I've got all commercially purchased um, diffusers in this case. And that's it. Hit the switch and then it turns on. And then, so obviously 
if you've got a whole bunch of guys, right, there are four pairs here, all using these in a dispersed area, uh, performing some kind, orchestrating some kind of performance, they're going to be far apart. And that range is too great for you to control the handles directly from the app using Bluetooth. So these handles are not themselves Bluetooth enabled. Instead, they are controlled via a Texas Instruments CC1101 uh, radio modem. You also need a good amount of power to make sure that you have a good amount of range. And my initial version of this used a pan stamp. And the pan stamp pretty much has a CC1101 hooked up to its default power supply. And that was okay, but actually pretty short ranged. So instead, Texas Instruments sells this evaluation board that's got a CC1101 and a CC1190 amplifier all on one board. And I designed a board around this. And so what I've got is the, a, um, an Arduino Pro Mini that provides the microcontroller capabilities. Oops, that goes on this way. And then I've got the CC1101, and these use a very small board. So I have these Adafruit SOIC20 adapters to adapt the headers at the bottom of this evaluation module to a proto board. And so I'll put this on here. Obviously I need power, so I've got a Pololu regulator. And then I've got the Adafruit, the NRF8001 Bluetooth module. So this Bluetooth module is controlled over SPI. The radio modem is also controlled over SPI. But fortunately, the radio is transmit only. And so pretty much, I only need to be listening for the Bluetooth module to assert a signal. And then when I receive something from the app, it'll then switch the assertion to the uh, switch the signal select rather to the um, to the CC1101 module, send it, and then go back to listening on the Bluetooth. This here is great, but it's got these kind of wings flapping off of it. So I had to design a case. This was printed also on the Kudo 3D Titan 1 um, in 3DM ABS. All of this is actually not stock 3DM ABS. I did uh, put some EP9009 from Eager Plastics in. That's a plasticizing agent that makes it a bit more flexible. So um, stock 3DM ABS is pretty brittle stuff and adding in the plasticizer gives it some give so that the box is more survivable on, on drops and stuff. And, and this doesn't really make it quite as strong as real ABS. Like this guy here is real ABS and it's super strong. And this is not as strong as real ABS, uh, but it's great for these purposes. The tolerances on 3DM ABS are quite good. And so I have PCB, have rails built into this, two at the bottom here, one on the side here to support the CC1101 module and one on the right side here to support the Bluetooth module. And the rail here is thinner than this because this is a one millimeter FR6 that Adafruit used. And then the other two are kind of regular 1.5, 1 1.6 millimeter um, FR4 that was used by Texas Instruments and by wherever I got this proto board from, probably from Fry's, I can't really remember. So this whole thing then slides in. There's a switch here, there's a cover. So I can put the cover on. This over here. And then need an antenna. And so there's a cutout over here designed for the for an, for an antenna. And I can use this stubby one here. Stub works fine in this case because I'm amplified. The stub doesn't didn't work so well in the original in the pan stamp. 
And then let's plug in the battery and then we turn off the other one. We see the app is continuously scanning. So we're in scanning status. Then I'll flip the switch on this guy. And there's a light. And the light is convenient in this case compared to the pan stamp. The Arduino Pro Mini has a light so I know that it's on. And here we go. The signal is actually quite strong. So I can put this, everything reacts pretty fast. And I can put this, put the relay pretty far away to activate these. And that's it. This is the RF controlled Bluetooth low energy app controlled RF glow sticks.